Welcome back to the Open Word Bible Study, the study that takes us inside and behind the original languages the Bible was written in, in order that we can pull from that context and bring it into our English Bibles, where we will have a deeper and better understanding of the words that we're reading within their context. Today, we're going to be studying a word that connects with the word we looked at just last week. And that word last week was face. You may remember that we focused primarily on face being connected to God, God's face, and that that means God's presence. It can also mean that God has his attention placed on us. Now today, we're going to be studying the word seek. And so both studies together, face and seek, will encourage us to be seeking God's face. And I say that, of course, while remembering what the Lord himself told Moses in Exodus 33, verse 20. Jason paraphrase, you cannot look at my face and live to tell about it. That's what he told Moses. And so as we're talking today then about seeking God's face, we're going to find out what does that mean within the context of here and now before we are in heaven with God, able to look at him face to face, able to see his glory completely. And so I want to begin by first reading a, a Bible text that does not even contain the word seek in it, not even once. It is Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, and there it's recorded what took place after Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, after they ate from the tree that God told them specifically not to eat from. So here's verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Listen, sin has for us to hide from God, to hide from God's face, from his presence, rather than to seek him. If we are living in sin, living in the shame of sin, we're not going to be seeking God's face. We're not going to be seeking his presence. We're going to be hiding like Adam and Eve were there in the garden. And so today, with the challenge and the encouragement that's being made for us to be seeking God's face, I want for us to remember that and to know that the only way that that sin and the shame of sin can be removed is through the forgiveness that is found in Jesus Christ alone. And so with that context now, we're going to go in to the first verse of study that contains the word seek. And it is Psalm 24, verse 6. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. If you were to read the, the verses that are right before verse 6, you, you would find out what the such is the generation. It's those who have been forgiven, those who have found the salvation that is in the Lord. Those are the ones who are able to seek him, to seek his face. And notice that Psalm 24 verse 6 does not contain seek just once, but twice. And here's the really crazy thing. Though it is seek both times, same English word. It's two completely different Hebrew words for each English seek there. So we're going to take the time to look at both Hebrew words today, beginning with the Hebrew word that is behind that first seek. So in Hebrew, from right to left, we have darash, as is transliterated there at the bottom of the screen. Darash means seek, but along with that, it means to care about something so much to view it as so worthy that you will investigate, you will search it out completely. Darash seems to emphasize the searching, especially through study. This doesn't mean that every time Darash appears in scripture that it's with a book and there's study happening, but that it can imply that. And so in the context of seeking God's face, it's wonderful to know that that can include study studying in this book, the Bible, God's own word. Darash is used 164 times through the Old Testament. And of all those times, of course, they're not all pertaining to seeking God's face, but it, it will usually appear as the word seek. And I want to bring picture to Darash. There's an, uh, an Arabic word 
that's very closely related to Darash, and it literally means to beat a path. Uh, this gives great picture to the intent of Darash, to the kind of seeking that would wear a path in the place of pursuit because of the frequency. That's, that's the picture, that's the concept of this Hebrew word Darash. And so you think about that in connection with the Bible, studying God's word. What does your Bible look like? Is it one that when you go to open to some place in the Bible, you have to kind of rip the page from the other one because it's still sealed, it's just come off the press? Or are your Bible pages well-worn with marks and stains and you can tell there's this well-worn path through Scripture as you've been seeking the face of God, seeking to know God more through His Word where He reveals Himself. Well, I want to take a look now at the second word, the second Hebrew word for seek, what we originally looked at there in Psalm 24, verse 6. But now we're going to go to another psalm, Psalm 27, verse 8, where we're going to find that the same Hebrew word, that second one in, uh, from Psalm 24, is used here twice as well. So it tells us, my heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. The application is the same from Psalm 24, verse 6 to verse 8 of Psalm 27. It's about seeking God's face. And here, again, twice the word seek is used. As I've already mentioned, both of these are the same Hebrew word. And let's look at what that Hebrew word looks like. From right to left, bakash as is transliterated there. Bakash, like darash, <laughs> means seek. And here it means to have a desire, to seek intently. Bakash is actually found more times throughout Scripture, throughout the Old Testament, than darash is. Bakash is found 225 times. And in the Strong's Concordance, it gives the example of application for this word, bakash, uh, being that you seek through worship or through prayer. So when you combine this word, bakash, and the first word we looked at, darash, <laughs> we get this picture of application for seeking God's face. It goes back to this, this well-beaten path that we have here, that it's not only through, through constant seeking and studying of God through his word, but also through prayer. Also through spending time in worship as we seek to experience more and more of God, more and more of his presence. And we have this word from Jesus found in the New Testament during his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. He says this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Both times that Jesus used the word seek, it was recorded here in Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8, with the Greek word, the zeato. And it's a, a, that word is a direct comparative with the Hebrew word, bakash the second Hebrew word that we looked at. Again, the one that meant to have a desire to seek intently, especially through worship and through prayer. And so without surprise, we, we recognize that the context then of verses 7 and 8 here in Matthew have to do with prayer. That's what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about seeking him through prayer. And isn't it awesome that Jesus tells us the one who seeks will find? That if you're going to seek the true living God, you will find him. He's not hiding from us. He wants us to seek him. He wants us to know him. He wants us to experience his presence and to experience his answers to our prayers. And so there's no time wasted in seeking the true living God, whether it be to bask in his presence or to seek answers in prayer. And so as you come across that word seek 
in your own reading, your own study of Scripture, whether you're in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, remember to identify that word seek with great purpose and frequency. That when you come across a passage where there's a person or there are people who are seeking, whether they're seeking God or, or something else entirely, whatever it is that they're seeking, pay attention to see how their actions would imply that their seeking is of great intent, that they're being very purposeful, they're, they're really searching out whatever that is. And then, of course, in the passages of Scripture where the application is left to you and, and to myself, where it's placed in our laps that we are to be seeking the face of God. Keep in mind that it's not a casual kind of seeking. Looking at the two Hebrew words, darash, bakash, and that's just fun to say together, darash and bakash, but, but that they are very purposed, and, and that it means to be seeking God with great fervor. Again, I want to end with this picture of the well-beaten path, that that's what our life should look like, uh, the direction of our life as we are seeking God, that there's a visible well-trodden path of continuously seeking that face of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that we can seek you. As a matter of fact, that you call for us to seek you and that you say that we will find you. I, I thank you, Lord, that in seeking you, we get to seek your face and that that is, is, is something of, of great... Um, a great blessing, because we can't get there on our own. It's through your forgiveness. It's through your forgiveness of our sins, us being washed through your work on the cross, Jesus, in order to be able to seek your face. And I pray, Lord, for each one of us, that it would be a, a seeking that, that shows a life of, of constancy in prayer, in worship, in studying who you are through your word where you reveal yourself. Lord, may we be a generation that seeks your face. And I ask that in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, next week, that is uh, Thursday, March 25th, join me here again. And we're going to open up another word in the open word Bible study together. Until then, shalom in Christ.